Alright, we're on the plane round two. Um, this sounds is very good. With nagging thoughts, we should be able to get two two card types in our, our yard for a kindly stranger. So, um, hopefully, not too far away from enabling delirium. Definitely a keep. Town gossip from there from our opponent. Presumably on some sort of an aggressive case. Um, so given that we'll certainly lead for a cool call as a complex rather than a nagging thought. Okay, well gossip mongo into two droppers. Pretty strong after. The price mark is actually a very good draw because it can trade with Gossip Munger. Or incited rabble, as it is about to be. It seems like not a fantastic trade for us, but um Against these red white aggro decks, like obviously our late game is much better. It's just about staying alive to get there. And now he's kind of obliged to spend two mana pumping it as well this turn. Oh, unless he can do that, that's pretty good. Okay, we're gonna have to find some removal. Oh, stranger. A stone constable. Okay, um. So we kind of have no way to spend our mana efficiently this turn. Um, I think we just play Kindly Stranger. The question is whether we attack. I think not. Although I suppose Kindly Stranger does block Sanguinary Mage pretty well. The thing is with um like his life total is very unlikely to be that relevant in this matchup. And I think this case has something like a Voldar and Duelist. It's probably worth not attacking with the Amalgam here. Griff Spoon can be a very difficult card to, to deal with though, because now like, even if we kill this inside of Drabble, we still have very big problem when he griff boons up the sanguinary mage or whatever. Definitely be bring in I think more copies of silent um whatever that card's called, one five flyer. <laughs> oh, fuck, sure. My opponent's deck looks very good. Um the question is do we want to try and find something with nagging forts or play Ghoulsteed? If we play Ghoulsteed we probably get to attack with the Amalgam here. Yes, it's just, I don't think we're going to be able to erase this inside of Drabble that way. Probably our best shot though, like just playing nagging bots and hoping to hit something seems really bad. Oh, actually we could play Light Lighter of Sell Off. So really should have done that pre-combat. Which was quite a big mistake, because now if 
trades off the prize to Malcolm, um, don't get to loot. But I think in reality he's pretty unlikely to do that, so I'm going to attack anyway. I'll discard for cool steed here. Well, depending on what we draw, obviously. Something like a compound deterrence would be pretty good here. Sinister concoction is fine. Oh, fantastic. So yeah, we will get to kill the inciter travel. But the Griff Spoon shall be coming back. You get a pretty nice turn next turn though of going like Sinister Concoction, Sacrifice It, Cast Necking Thoughts from Madness. We should get us pretty close to Delirium for Kindly Stranger as well. Okay, interesting attack. What does he have? Well, there's a whole bunch of traits he could have. I think we block like this, probably. Like, I'm very reluctant to block Ghoul Call's accomplice on the Sanguinary Mage because she's just like one spell and he gets to eat it. I think this trade's a little better. Spiteful motives, sure. Well, that would be an excellent time. Unfortunately, we already have one. But hopefully, you get to kill it with Kind of Stranger. Hmm. So I mean, I suppose we are taking more damage from that Sanguinary Mage next turn, technically, but yeah, I think we kind of have to do it. Killing the Incisor Travel. Although if we kill... So I suppose we get to do it on his attack step, so he can't bring back the Griff Spoon and use it to attack next turn. And given we have the ghoul steed in the yard, we could just like trade off the whole chump with a prized amalgam here. Um, that's kind of only good if we actually get to use Kindly Stranger next turn, though. Well, I suppose if not, we get to just play a ghoul steed, but that doesn't actually block the mage. Hmm. It seems quite bad to take four from this turn, though. But it does not feel good. Okay, choose a creature. Get a discard and nagging forts. So what did we mill? A vessel of Pamnesia. Well that doesn't help. Take the rancid rats. So it's not good against spiteful motives. Okay, so we did get there to the end. So, Ooh, Westvale Abbey. 
Interesting. Um, so I think it's pretty obvious we have to flip the kindly stranger here. Um, question is, do we do it now or on his turn? I suppose we get paid off if he like decides to um to put the griff spoon on it, but that seems really unlikely that he'd do that. The other question is do we play this land or do we hold it to discard for ghoul steed? Probably hold it and just play the rancid rats, I think. Yeah, I think we just flip it now. I know he's going to have a an attack with a stern constable, but the best way of happy, we need, we need to have like some sort of proactivity. Hang on, um, so it may actually be better to um, play the land here and then discard both of these for ghoul steed. Like, it's giving up quite a bit of value, but it means we do get a Ghoul Steed and the prized amalgam back for next turn. Yeah, that seems a little better. But yeah, it doesn't mean we don't have an untapped creature at all. But we do have quite a lot of power in play now. Hopefully this is not a haste creature. No, but it isn't near Heath Chaplin, which is quite good here. So we have no flyers block up. Token isn't tapped, is it? No. Okay, chose not to attack at all. Mm. Yeah, I think we probably just swing with everything here. Okay, so if we trade off, if he just decides to trade off for the chaplain, um. He can then make two tokens, and he then has. Four creatures. Yeah, I think we just can't afford to not do anything here, though. Like, otherwise, he's just gonna keep making tokens. So we kind of have to attack. Okay, so phase jumping is good. His plan's obviously is to attack the trap there. We can block the zombie token. So you can always land to discard to a ghoul steed. So Griff spoons this. That'll put him up to thirteen. Can attack him back for eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I think that's another play, presumably. Angelic Purge for Ghoul Steed, sure. Mm. 
Okay, um... Well, obviously we're attacking that thing. Unless it looks like something is coming up a point short here. And... Yeah, we definitely have him next turn. I'm trying to think if there's like, any benefit to playing with Drown Yard Explorers rather than returning the Gold Steed here. I don't think there is. I suppose he can like attack us, go up to 8. Um, and then if he plays a creature, he takes... Four. He's still dead now. He just has like one blocker. Oh, that was a great draw. Because now we're not just dead next turn. So something like Silver Strike, I think, would get him out of this. Yeah, no, he's got nothing. Cool, I did not think we were going to win this game, that game, so that was good. Um, so I think we definitely want the second Silent Observer. Because it's good against... Um, the Griff Spoon, which is a pretty difficult card for us. So I think we can cut just like one of our random ground dudes. Maybe cut the stitch wing scab again even. It does go pretty well with like our actual proactive game plan though. Yeah, it's probably fine. Yeah, we probably just cut like a lamp lighter. It's a bit expensive. I think the rest of our deck's pretty good here, though. Hmm. Um. Well, we need to find black mana. But other than that, this sounds pretty good. And we've got a vessel to play. This vessel would be so much better if it was like one to cast and two to craft. It's a bit awkward, it says. It's like you can't play this, crack it, and play a free drop on turn three. If some people don't like keeping car, like lands without a lot of stuff you can cast, but. I think you absolutely cannot bug in this hand. Like, with eight black saucers, it's such a big favourite. We'll probably, probably not hear black sauce and die now I've said that, but... I think it's pretty easy to keep. Always watching. Well, that's not a very fun card. Well, it is for him. It's not very fun for me. Oh, that's quite good with Stern Constable as well. Well, we didn't hit for Black Source. So I guess we crack this and look for it. Nope, we are, as predicted, going to not hit any Black Sources and die. We might be dying anyway, though. I don't think we're quite at the stage of compound deterrence to save two points of damage yet. We're not that far. Ugh. Well, that was bad. Oh, 
cool to see them in Venice or West, but I believe we are going to lose this game. I wonder if he decides to play a pump spell. Um, we probably just have to save some damage this turn. Guess we just return that. This is senseless, right? No, oh, that's three more damage. I think he was, um, yeah, he was certainly not playing that if we didn't bounce for always watching. I don't think we're ever going to get a blowout. Okay, there's a black source. It's not really doing very much though. can just tap a creature down if we play a creature. I guess we just like dead weight this and go to one. A few enchantments, but unfortunately, um, blue black have no access to disenchant or naturalize effects or anything. Um, nope, we are really quite dead. That was a beating. Yeah, we just missed black mana for far too long, but um, yeah, as I say, I think you just mulligan far too much if in limited if you mulligan hands like that give up way too much value and we had for you know the vessel uh, so we had like what like four or something draw steps to hit black mana okay um is there anything else we want it might be just like a grotesque mutation is actually pretty good just to for Give us a bit of a life boost. Maybe take out the other lamp lighter. Yeah, that seems fine. Keep this out. Our opponent's deck does seem excellent. Always watching it's a beating. But Tooth Collector is very good against him. And we do have like two drop into three drop this game. And being on the play is pretty pretty big deal as well. Presumably good. I'm just going to run the prize to Malcolm out there. Block Sanguinary Mage really well. Like, I think when when it needs two prowess triggers, Uita, you can block with a lot of a lot of confidence, which is nice. I think if um, if we don't draw a land, we're just gonna play vessel and crack it here and try and find one. 
Mm, yeah, I think even with Diagraph Colossus. Um, so this way we might get another zombie in the yard for Diagraph Colossus, but I think we want to save Tooth Collector ideally until we get some sort of value off of it. So yeah, crack this main phase, case we do hit land so we can play it. No, unfortunately not. We've put two zombies in the yard though, so Diagraph Colossus will be a 4-4, four -four, which is pretty nice. Nahif Chaplin, sure. Um, so I think we probably just play the tooth collector to kill the chaplain straight away. Like we're gonna have to trade for it at some point, so and let him get the tokens. So I think it's better to do it now. That way, it doesn't gain a bunch of life. <laughs> do you need some small lands? If he decides to... That is it aggressive. Senseless Rage, main phase. So anyway, if he decided to crack the chaplain this turn, we can um, play Nagging Thoughts, get two Collector on. And just kill it. Um, so what do we want to do about this? There is turns of 4 6. Next turn it's going to be a 3 5. But if we cast Nagging Thoughts, it can only be a 2 4. We're also just going to play a 4 4 Diagraph Colossus next turn. We'd have to triple block to kill it, which sounds bad. Yeah, I think we just let take 4 here. Really hope. Oh. There we go. Okay. Um. So I guess the choice is between Silent Observer and Diagraph Colossus. I mean, it needs two prowess triggers to get the Sanguinary Mage past the Observer. I think we just play that here. I'm actually going to attack with Prized Amalgam first as well. We could attack both of these. Oh no, because he can... Um... Right, so we can flip this at instant speed. Which we're actually fine for him to do that just to get these to bounce off of each other. If he wants to do that, that's fine, because he just have to sack a land. We don't want him to get to eat the Gold Claws Compass. Inspiring Captain A. Eh? That is not enough to make your Sanguinary Mage attack. Oh, I can't attack, it just won't do anything. Cool. Um, so this turn we can... I think our best... We probably want to start putting a clock on him when we can. And I think the best way to do that is to discard Ghoul Steed plus Nagging Forts to Stitch Wing Scarp. Which is going to both get us a 3-1 Fire in play and um, turn on Delirium for Tooth Collector. Which is actually quite a nice defensive option. Um, and he's, it basically means he needs one more point of power to attack. Yeah, 
I think that's pretty good. And then we can actually play Diagraph Colossus in this. Oh no, we can't play Diagraph Colossus in the same turn as well. I think this is a pretty good thing. I think we want to keep this land in hand so we can hard cast the other Ghoul Steed. Oh, there's actually really no reason to do this now. I thought this was one of the ones where it could only be done at sorcery speed, but it isn't. Um, well, both of these cards seem good. Yeah, I think we just want the Silent Observer. It's a really good blocker. I'm going to shrink the Sanguinary Mage because it um, obviously works best with pump spells compared to Inspiring Captain. Well, playing that into, into two is kind of really an interesting move. Another truth collector. That's pretty cool. So we get to kill, um, like kill the pious evangel. There's upkeep. Unless he wants to flip it over. Fine with that. That's tight for free. I guess maybe he's gonna flip it over at this end step anyway. That's why he played for a fox, just so he could sacrifice it. Yeah, I think we still just play it though. I guess actually we could have done it like pre-combat, couldn't we? And then, um, maybe... Well, we still don't have good attacks for our ground guys, so it doesn't really matter. So I think we're just gonna like make all his guys two power. Given that we can't kill anything. I feel I forget you can do this one at instant speed too. That thing I've been doing at sorcery speed the whole time, which is kinda of dumb. Oh well. So I've been playing a lot with um this card and the white ones which you can only do it. At sorcery speed. Sure. It's not very close to delirium. And a wicker witch into tooth collector. It is all about one tough creatures. some attacking. We still leave one five black back, no real reason to attack for it. And I'm just gonna play the <laughs> and I can hard cast school seed for turn afterwards. And get some sweet value. I think that's a little better than like discarding both of these cards, gaggle steed back this turn. Gets the drainers, but that's fine. I 
think I actually think this deck is really good. It's it's played much better than I thought it would. Flame Band Flame Blade Angel. I can talk. Um well that's quite good. So we could like grotesque mutation to kill it. So maybe the players if he attacks us with it next turn, we grotesque mutation our silent observer. But actually, I think if we leave both these back, he actually just won't attack us. So I'm just gonna hard cast a ghoul steed for stone. Especially because we can make this flame blade angel about small. Actually, I kind of forgot we could just kill the moorland thing. Oh well. Too late now. Not that it's actually doing anything. Nini has two card types. I'm surprised he hasn't made some spirits yet. They're very good against Stitchwing Scab. Okay, Inspiring Captain. this off. It's fine. I imagine he has some sort of trick. Like rush for adrenaline, strength of arms. I suppose I could um I could like do this. That seems pretty good. So we're gonna get the prize amalgam back. Either way. And this will kill him through quite a kill the inspiring captain through like a lot of tricks. Okay, all sort of triggers happen. So I guess maybe this is his plan to just kill us with Wayward Disciple and Flame Blade Angel. Since the concoction was a great draw. So I think we're just going to use that to kill the Flame Blade Angel. Right now. Discarding, I guess, a land? Hmm. It's a bit awkward that we then like don't play anything else this turn. It's probably still land though, like, I think this grotesque mutation is gonna be pretty good actually. His plan is to kill us with Wayward Disciple. It seems very good. Okay, we have no real good attacks unfortunately. He gets to drain us twice more.
still going to hold this land, I think, to discard. I don't think there's much chance we actually want to cast Grotesque Mutation this turn. Okay, let's kill this guy. Again, Griff Spoon. Okay. Well, it looks like we're chumping this turn. So I guess we attack with just for skit Stitchwing Scub now. And I think we actually Grotesque Mutation here just to gain 6 life. That seems fine. And then we can use the Tooth Collectors to... Um, Steed on his end step. We're not m that far away from just being able to attack and kill him. But he's still on 12. What happens if we attack for everything? Um, blocks like here, here. Yeah, I don't think we can kill him this turn. it back. Yeah, I think we do want to kill this blood mad vampire, like we do have to kill him with creature combat. We also need to be slightly careful about time. We get to make another ghoul steed this turn. Gossip longer, sure. I think we might just be able to attack for everything now. So, save locks here, 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 he takes one, two. Save looks like all of these four takes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, okay, and then how can he. If any drains us a bit, um, can he then kill us on the crackback? So, the thing is, we get to shrink stuff. Um, uh, this is actually quite difficult. I'm running out of time. I think it's okay because, um, I think it's just about okay. Like, I think he doesn't quite die and then we don't quite die. And then we win the turn afterwards. But I am not 100% sure that this is right. But I think if I spend ages figuring it out and then it's wrong, then I'll just time out. Like, I mean, he does have to have something, because otherwise he'll die with the triggers on the stack. And, like, obviously it's pretty possible he's just holding, like, a land. So I suppose if he has something to not die, then... That makes it simpler. Hey, that was, a, that was a really good game. Um, yeah, I thought our opponent's deck was quite good. Um... I really like the Red White Aggro deck in this format. But yeah, we just about got there, and I'll see you back for the finals. <laughs>